Praxis Prepper. Everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn a soda can into a rocket stove. We've all seen rocket stoves; they're advertised all over, like the preparedness community and everything. They're for you know camping, and it's a great way of taking a small amount of fuel and focusing it very efficiently on something that you want to cook. Uh, they also can be kind of expensive. I know the one that I bought was it's like $100. Uh, the one that I, I bought was also kind of bulky and heavy and uh, you know not really great for backpacking. But the idea of a rocket stove is essentially very simple. It is just a conduit where you can have a fire at the bottom and the fire goes up through it and focuses on whatever you you know, want to cook up at the top is essentially building a chimney with a small hole at the bottom to let the uh, the air in. Now there are all sorts of advantages to having like the larger rocket stoves because they can have uh, insulating material around them and all these kinds of things. But if you're in a pinch and you don't have a rocket stove or you just don't want to spend the money on it, you can make one out of all sorts of things. And I'm going to do it out of a uh, a soda can today. You could also make one out of like a, a tin can. Uh, this one had some olives in it. You could make it out of that as well. And if you did make it out of this, these tend to be a, it's a stronger metal than this, so uh, it, it it would last longer. You know, I tried to clear the bugs out earlier before I did the, uh, the video, but they, they just keep flowing in. So you may see me use this occasionally during the video. Uh, so you could make one out of this and it would be a little bit more permanent and be a little bit higher quality, uh, but it's also harder to cut. You know, if you're gonna use power tools, it'd be pretty easy to, to do one with one of these, but I'm going to make it out of this because it's pretty easy to cut just with a knife uh, and uh, it fits, uh, fits a can right on top. Also, as you know, a lot of uh, uh, these soda cans also kind of nest one on top of each other. So if you uh, the, if you put this together in the way that I'm going to show you, if you had a second soda can, you could put this, the second soda can on top and you could boil water or whatever inside the soda can on top. So to start off, I want to explain what we're going to do. Uh, what we have to do to, to modify this in order to turn it into a rocket stove is we need to open up the top so that the heat can come out. We need to have a little bottom port where we can put in fuel and it'll also let in air. And I'm going to clear out the bugs again. They're just little ones. I don't even I don't even know if they're going to bite me, but they're just irritating. Uh, and then the other thing that we need to do is we need to make some extra holes around the top sides here because if we take something and we place it right on top, you're going to just suffocate your fire because none of the air can get out. So you you need to put some uh, air uh, air holes at the top to let some of the heat out if you're completely going to cover it up with something. So. I also got a slug crawling around on my work surface here. So to start off, the first thing that I want to do is I want to do these small little holes around the periphery here. And the reason I want to do those first is because once I start cutting into all this top area, I'm really going to start weakening the, the can out. So I want to, uh, these are going to be kind of tricky to get all these little holes in. And I want the can to be as rigid as it possibly can be while I'm working on these. And uh, since I'm going to be working with a knife, which is sticky and doesn't really open very easily anymore just with my thumb, uh, what I'm going to be uh, doing is I'm going to make triangular holes because those are kind of, it's an easy shape to cut. And I'm going to do those by just taking the knife point and popping it in to the can like that. And I want to make another cut down like this, but if I, if I push it in from here, sometimes it can be a little bit messy. So I'm going to take the second cut point and I'm going to start from the bottom and meet my top cut point. And as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of rocking the knife in on my finger. I'm not using a tremendous amount of pressure. Okay, and I've got the, the hole there, and I use my knife to bend it down. Just like that. So you can see, I got one knife point. So what I'm gonna do, I'm sorry, I've got one hole made with my knife point. Uh, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a series of these around the top here. This would be a good opportunity to fast forward. Or, but yeah, I'll, I'll show you one more, and then you can fast forward through the rest. So I'm going to make the next one right next to it. I want to leave enough space so that, you know, it's not tearing into it, because this surface needs to keep its uh, its strength, because this is going to be the top surface you're going to be cooking on. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll space it out about is uh, almost the, the width of another, uh, of this thing itself. So I'll space the next one out over to here. Here we go. And popping the knife blade in. All right. And then from the bottom again. There we go. And push it down. Oh wait, so I'm just gonna continue this process all the way around. Oh, 
Okay, and I got the last one of them. So you can see that there is a continual series of holes all the way around. It reminds me, and it might remind you, of a gas stove where, you know, the fire kind of comes up out of the sides. Um, it's going to be kind of a lot like that because the top surface will oftentimes get covered up. So the next step is to open up this top area. Uh, and we're going to do that kind of in the same way. We take the knife, and I, I'm, I have my my finger right next to the blade like this, and I'm using my finger as kind of a guide as I'm pushing it in. And what I'm going to do is cut right along this natural kind of seam right on the bottom uh, of the groove here. It's, it's the place where you usually suck the soda out because it like kind of pools in there at the bottom. So right in there is going to be where I'm going to be cutting this out. And I want to be careful not to push down too much because this top area has been weakened a little bit. Okay. And I've got it started right in there, and now I'll just take the knife and I'm going to kind of wiggle it through. And I'm not using a tremendous amount of force, it's just this wiggling motion that's kind of tearing through the, the metal as you go. And you want to be careful about your hand that you're kind of pushing lightly towards. Knife safety is a real thing. Right. Most of this pressure that I'm pushing is downward pressure, not forward pressure. Once I can get the whole knife in, this will be a little easier. Now I'm just at about at the end here and I'm going to be very cautious as I push through this because the knife is going to free itself just as it goes through. And I'm not pushing, I'm not cutting towards my hands because my hands are around the ring here. Got to be very cautious with knives. There we go. Okay. So that piece fell in there. So now we've got this nice top cooking surface. By the way, all these edges, they're very sharp. It's kind of dangerous. Be careful with all those. Uh, I could try to fish that out, but I don't really need to worry about it right now because we're going to have to make a door here anyway. And the doorway, again, is to let air in. It's also to be able to put fuel in. And it could really go anywhere. Um, just the idea is you want it to be nice and low. And you want it to be above where the, uh, the can starts to taper down because that, that part of the bottom is giving you a little bit of rigidity. And what we want to do is cut up uh, across the top and then back down. Not necessarily in that order, but the point is we don't want to uh, cut the, the bottom of this flap because we're going to have it fold out and that will help to kind of hold fuel as we're putting it in. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one cut from the side, another cut from the other side, and then I'm going to connect the two at the top. Okay, so start down here. And again, just, well, maybe for safety I'll put it down. I'm trying to show you guys where it's up high, but we're going to put it in like that. And it doesn't take a lot of force to push into a a little can like this, all right? And we cut it from there to here. I'll do a corresponding cut over here. And I'm gonna go, uh, I don't know, about that far across. There, here we go. All right, so we've got two vertical cuts. Each one of these is maybe about an inch uh, inch or so uh, tall. And then uh, to cut, connect these two, what I want to do is instead of starting at one end and cutting over, I'm going to start in the middle and, and come over to meet them. And that just uh, keeps it from uh, folding over and getting crunched as much. So we'll start in the middle and come over and meet one. Flip it around. Remember these are going to be very sharp edges. And 
there, there we go. Okay, now we need to fold down this little door. And I would recommend using the knife so you're not using your fingers on those sharp edges. I'm just gonna pinch it between there and the knife. And sometimes I, I'll, I'll have to cut these in a little bit, but sometimes I can get some nice beautiful folds just using the knife like this. All right. This is probably the most dangerous part because you've got this big sharp edge here. Okay, there we go. We got it out. And now, I think I am going to cut these sides in a little bit, and that'll just re relieve some of this tension. Well, you know, I, it always works better when you don't, so I'm not going to. <laughs> okay. If you have to, you can cut those sides, but it, it makes it a little less rigid. All right. There we go. All right, and we've got a nice little tray here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you how this thing actually uh, gets used. I'm going to be actually cooking in this little can on top. I'm not going to do it on this surface because it's made of plastic and it would melt. Uh, but we're going to go around to the back where there's some rocks. I'll place this down. We'll get a fire going inside and we'll see if we can get some water boiling. Okay, so we're back here by the rocks, which is a much more appropriate place to be doing the burning so we don't like uh, you know melt the bin or anything also it's kind of a, maybe it would have been a prettier spot to have done all the cutting and everything i just i didn't want to come back here because sometimes it's sort of buggy but once we get a fire going in here it should be uh reasonably you know that that always helps with clearing out the bugs now the first thing if you were just like someone coming cold to this like looking at this little thing you might say well man you can't fit anything in there it's just like little sticks and twigs and things and that's about all you could probably put in there and uh that's true uh but that's kind of also the point that one of the points of a rocket stove is that it can get a lot of heat derived out of a small amount of wood because it's focusing it all on you know whatever your task is in this case you know we're gonna cook some water in, in this little can here so the idea that it's small and it can't fit very much that's kind of the point of the whole thing is you can get a lot out of a little bit so to begin what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of paper in there I, I just got some paper from my recycle bin I brought out paper is always a really easy fire start but you can use anything that's dry just it rained here last night and it's there's not a ton dry and this is a video about making a rocket stove not about how to start a fire with wet wood which is possible but it just takes more time it's irritating and sometimes you hyperventilate a little bit so newspaper is always a great one whenever i go camping i always uh i always bring uh embers from the the previous camping trip i have a little metal tin and i'll keep embers from the last fire because embers are also a really easy fire start so i'll just drop some paper in here and it is going to have to be little bits because it's a it's a small a small space here. So I'm going to drop them in from the top. Later on, we'll be feeding things. Man, it's kind of stable. <laughs> More stable enough, I hope. All right, and they can just be kind of fluffy. We're going to be feeding it from the top to begin with, and then later on we'll move to feeding it from the uh, from the side. Get some matches in my pocket, I think. Yeah, okay. Cool, and we'll light it up. And uh, in addition to the, uh, the paper, I've got a bunch of dried sticks and things. It's been really humid though, so they're not, not super dry, but I think they'll be dry enough. All right. So we're gonna get that going. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of keep feeding it paper in through the top and get it, uh, get the, the interior space here kind of burning. Once I feel like I got enough paper in there, I'll start adding some of these. Whoop, it's super light. That's one of the downsides of these is that they're they're very, very light. Yeah, I'll put that there. Okay. I don't think I really needed it anyway, I just wanted to use it up. Okay, uh, hemlock branches are a great early add for fire. The only thing we want to make sure we do is break them up enough so they actually fall down into the stove. Because if they just burn at the top, they're not going to uh, not going to be much use to us. Get some more paper in there. You want kind of a lasagna of paper and wood until the wood starts burning. You want the paper to continue to be there. A little bit more of that. That didn't go in very deep. I need to push that stuff in more. Just get some more paper in there. That's the hemlock branches burning there. They light pretty easily and they'll sustain, you know, actual uh, wood burning because that's what you want to get to. You're not going to cook your food on burning paper unless you're really rich and you're burning money. Remember that scene in the film 2012 where 
that was, was it, was it 2012? No, not 2012. The day after tomorrow, there's that like environmental disaster film where like the whole world got cold all of a sudden and there were people trapped in a library and they were all burning books and it was like supposed to just represent, it's like, oh, we're burning books because, you know, to survive and everything. Now, there was a lot of furniture there that would have burned a lot better than all those books they were trying to burn. I mean, they could have started the, uh, started their fire with books, but they really should have transitioned to some of that, that nice furniture and there was like oak paneling and everything. They could have done a much better fire that way. Okay, so I'm still I'm still feeding stuff in. This fire is not, as far as I'm concerned, established yet because it's it's just a lot of paper burning right now, and not a lot of wood. So I really want to get the wood going. Once you get wood going, it's hard to screw up after that because the wood is going to uh, just sustain the fire. And this is just really dry, brittle stuff. As you can see already, the fire is going straight up from the top. And you can see that if you put something on top there, it's really going to direct all that heat right into your, right into your fire. I'm going to put a little more paper in there. Sometimes I'd be a little bit more cavalier, but for this video, I don't want the fire to go out. Ain't nobody got time to see me start it again. I'm going to wad this one up kind of tightly. Drop it in there. All right. And I think we're getting pretty close. Once that paper starts burning, I think we're getting pretty close to where I can put put some air in there. You see, when you, if you want to blow on it, you blow into that bottom section there. Get in there. That's where they get the word rocket stove. Just like that. All right, so that's working all right. I think we got some actual wood burning there. Yeah, so I'm gonna take this can here and I got a root beer container filled with water. And I put a little water in there and we're gonna take it and, ooh, this is a little dangerous now. Oh boy, I don't have anything to hold this with. I guess, I, and it's kind of unstable so I can't just kind of toss it on the, wow, this is, this is kind of sketchy. Usually I have it on something more stable so I can just toss it on the top. All right, there we go. <laughs> don't do that at home yeah I mean I just put it on the rocks so it'd be the proper elevations so you can see it but ideally you'd kind of have this on the ground and you could even put some stones around it and some sand so it's much more stable than this but it's, it's beautiful you know it, the show must go on you got to be able to see it if you can't see it it didn't happen all right all right so you can see that the heat's all being directed up in there. I suppose I, you know, sometimes you get, with these tiny ones, you can put them in through the top. But the idea mostly here is that you are going to be sticking your firewood through the side here. And this little tray is going to help you with that. You can put some stones out here as well to, uh, to facilitate, you know, holding lot larger sticks. One thing that you can do is you can just sort of take uh, the end of a stick and put it in and you can like slowly feed the, the stick in as you go. I can already hear the water starting to boil. There we go. Yep, yeah, the water's starting to steam up here. When you're watching this, my boy and I are actually camping right now. Uh, I recorded this earlier in the week for a friend of mine who wanted to go camping and she was going to be going camping the beginning part of this week and she was thinking about making a rocket stove and I said or she, she was thinking about thinking about getting a rocket stove and I was like shit dude you can just build one and I said it just like that I'm sure too so a glove or a mitt would be helpful here but you can see that these sticks are totally they've all totally caught and this thing's working like a rocket stove right now I could just sit here all day I just love camping and Hanging out and smelling the campfire. Did I get ash on my face? That's the great thing about camping is nobody cares. That's yeah, working really well. So there you go. If you want a rocket stove, I'd highly recommend them. They're a really efficient way of you know cooking your food. Even if you only have like just a couple little twigs, you can totally you know cook a meal. 
Uh, you know, if you wanted to make uh, cooks in something bigger than this can and all you had was a bunch of these little tin cans, you could actually make like four of them, like around the bottom or three of them. I guess you, can get, you, you could support it on three and you could put like a larger pot on top of like a few of them and, and they could cook it around the edge. I've never, I've never done that, but theoretically that would work just fine. But a lot of times you don't really even need to cook that much. I mean, you just heat up some water in here. If you had some noodles or rice, you could all just drop it in the top. Remember, this is going to be hot when you pull it off the top, so you want to be careful with that. Uh, and, uh, and there you go. I just love camping. There you go. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.